Good morning, drum corps. Good morning, box. The first chunk we are taking is from letter D, as in djembe, to letter G, as in gnome. Djembe to gnome, djembe to gnome, djembe to gnome. Drums, you're all in. Brass, you're, you're doing whatever you do to get better. Here we go. Eric Carr. You negatively affect all five senses. What? Well, you look like garbage. You sound terrible. You smell like you haven't showered. You make me feel like I'm gonna throw up. And, uh, what's, what's the other? What, taste? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, you taste bad, too. <clears throat> Fix it! No! Getting called out is the worst! So I'm gonna share some personal call-outs that I've dealt with, both as a teacher, me calling out, and as a student, me getting called out. I'm gonna share some of my best ones and some of my worst ones. So, here we go. For those of you who don't know, the phrase getting called out, that's kind of the same thing as getting corrected, but in front of everybody, and it's super embarrassing sometimes, and yeah, you just don't really want that to happen too much. Like, there's a huge difference between getting taught something and getting called out on something. Like, getting taught, that means, you know, you're getting the fundamentals, you know, things you might not know or not be expected to know at that point, but getting called out, that's just kind of being told what you're doing wrong and stuff that you should know. That's sort of the major difference. All of you who've done marching band or drum corps, you, you know what I'm talking about. In my experience, both as a teacher and as a student, there are three main types of call-outs. The first one is the lowest level, which is a student-on-student call-out. This could be a section leader calling out somebody within their section, or just a random person calling out another random person, but that's it's peer to peer. And this kind of call out, it might be fine, it might go over well, you might learn something, but depending on how the one peer is talking and addressing the issue to the other peer, it could, it could go really badly. Level two on the call out scale, that is the section tech to the member. So a section tech, that is who is in charge of your individual section on the marching band or drum corps field, that person is most of the time gonna be down on the field with you. So they might be just calling out the entire section in general, or they could just be calling you out and your entire section will be paying attention and know that you're getting called out. So you wanna try to avoid getting those kind of call outs. And the third level is getting called out from the box. You do not want to get called out from the box. Everybody is going to hear it. Every single person in the ensemble is paying attention to the box. At least you totally should be. And they will hear you getting called out and know what your deficiency is. So don't be so bad that the box can see it. We're going to start with my top three worst call outs as a student. So. I was the one getting called out in these situations. This first story happened when I was playing in a concert percussion ensemble. We were doing, I don't remember what the piece was at all, but I was playing, I think, xylophone with a soft rubber mallet. And I had these mallets for like several years and they were kind of wearing down. And we were playing this piece in rehearsal and the mallet head just 
flew right off. It popped off and went all across the room. And we had to stop the rehearsal because it was like kind of funny and goofy. And I had a whole lot of extra sticks in my stick bag that I could have used, but for some reason, I just decided to try to pop that mallet head back on the mallet. So I, I twisted and jammed it and got it back on there. And then we started playing again, and lo and behold, the mallet head went flying off once again. And now the, the instructor, he was like pretty mad at me. I had like nothing to say other than I don't know why I did that again. And I should have totally got another mallet out of my stick bag, but I didn't. And I disrupted rehearsal and I got called out in front of everyone. This next story takes place early season in drum corps. It was one of our first shows. I think it was the first week we were on tour and we just got done our show. And from what I remember, I thought it was fine. Like, I don't remember any serious issues. Obviously it was at the beginning of the season. So there was some stuff that wasn't perfect yet, but from what I remember, it was fine. And we were walking back as a section, like talking about it. And our tech comes over to us and just totally kills any type of positive vibe we had because he told us how terrible the show went. It was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And that was the only time that ever really happened. Like usually when you get done a show, it's like all positive. Cause like, obviously you're not gonna go out there and try to do terrible. Like you did as best as you possibly could. But our tech was like really not happy about it and made us all feel like crap. And that wasn't good. So I don't recommend doing that if you're an instructor. No matter how crappy and awful the show was, just say good job. I mean, they didn't try to do awful. At least I hope they didn't try to do terrible on purpose. So a little bit of positive reinforcement goes a long way in general. The last story on this list of my worst callouts as a student, um, this was at some show in high school. I think it was indoor. I know a lot of schools do this where you'll going to the show on the bus and they'll tell you to have a silent bus ride, which is pretty annoying and I never do that, but it makes sense to do that because like you want to be focused, you want to be ready to go, all that good mumbo jumbo. We did that, we got there, we did the show. It went horrible apparently. I don't, I don't really remember. I just remember the techs were really displeased with us. It wasn't quite as bad as the last story I told, but they were not happy with the show. So what they decided to do was have a silent bus ride on the way back to the school, which makes no sense whatsoever. That was insanely stupid. It's actually really funny thinking about it. Like, I, I don't know, they didn't explain why they did it because there was no reason. It's stupid to do that. So all of us are sitting on the bus. We're told to be completely silent. At the end of the show, we have like nothing to prepare for but to go home. And we're just all like totally screwing around. Like we're just like motioning through the seats, like kind of mouthing words, whispering quietly. And our, our instructors like kept reinforcing it the whole way home. I think it was like an hour and a half bus ride that we weren't allowed to talk on. That was really dumb and made no sense. And don't ever do that. All right, now we're gonna turn the tables around. We're gonna do my best call outs as a student. This isn't like positive, like good job, Eric. These are just like funny things I remember. So this first one, we were at spring training in drum corps and we were, it's the middle of rehearsal day. And for some reason I was like full of energy. I don't know why that happens sometimes, I guess. But we were all screwing around. I think it was a lunch break and we're like over by the equipment truck. And I find this like, this piece of wood, the way this piece of wood was shaped, it was like a round cylinder and the one end was curved around. So it resembled the male genitalia a whole lot. So me being a very mature individual, I took this piece of wood and I put it into my shorts, which were very tight, by the way. Think like kind of booty shorts. Oh, and yeah. I walked around like I had a, a giant Party. erect penis and was just show, showing off my fake erect penis in front of everyone. And then the caption head comes walking by and sees me with that and like freaks the heck out because apparently this is his piece of wood. I, I don't know what he was using it for, but it was his. And he got really mad that I put it in my pants like that. And I just I handed it over to him. He took it and walked away with it. And that was the end of that. And I still have no idea what that piece of wood was for, but that was really, really funny and really, really awkward. This next story was during an indoor rehearsal. And for some reason, the director, he was, so he was up in the box 
and he had this one of those gigantic exercise balls like the ones you see in those walmart cages that people dive into and get really hurt yeah he had one of those so he was up in the box with this ball for some reason and we were doing a visual rehearsal and we were cleaning this body move where we like rose up on our toes and also like brought our hands up in the air and without giving any comments he says eric carr Everyone watch him do it. And I, I didn't know why I was getting singled out. Maybe it was because I looked really good doing it. So I did the body move, gave it my best effort. And then he screams no and throws the ball down and hits my drums and bounces way up in the air. And it was actually really hilarious. And I was super confused because I didn't know what was wrong. But apparently we weren't supposed to bring our hands above our head. It was supposed to be like here. But I was going like... Too high and apparently that's cause enough to get called out and have a gigantic ball thrown at you and my last favorite call out story this was also at drum corps during spring training the entire drum line was tracking and our caption head just flew in from where he lived not gonna say because then you'll know who he is but he flew in and rented a car and drove to where we were. Instead of getting out of the car, because remember, this is drum corps spring training and it was over 100 degrees, he decides to drive his rental car alongside of us while we're tracking in this block. And then as he gives comments, he just drives around to what section he needs to talk to. And it ended up with him just driving in circles around our tracking block, like yelling comments out the window at people. And this happened for like a good like half an hour until he ran over the base Tex Gatorade bottle. Like it was one of those huge like gallon sized Gatorade bottles and it just <laughs> exploded all over the place. Somebody clean that up right now. And that was really funny, not for the base tech, because that, that was probably like a $5 Gatorade that he just lost, but it was really funny for the rest of us. Okay, so now we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna go to me as an educator, because I did teach a lot of band in my day. So we're gonna start with my worst callouts, and I was trying really hard to think of some of these, and I wanted to do a top 12, like total, like three for each of these categories, but I could only think of two, like really bad callouts. And I mean, I'm not a mean person, like I'm a really nice educator, like probably too nice, honestly. So this was kind of hard for me to think of mean callouts, but these are not really mean, they're just kind of awkward and really bad timing. So this first story was when I was teaching a high school band. Um, we were on a lunch break in the band room, and that morning I gave a talk to the drum line about some good old historical drum corps and how they used to have a tick system where the judges would look for mistakes and if they saw a mistake or heard a mistake, they would give you a tick and you would lose a point. And that's not the way it works at all anymore, but back in the day that's how it did and that's kind of the phrase like, hey, stop ticking as in stop screwing up and losing us points. So I gave that talk and it's always pretty funny and interesting. But anyways, we're on our lunch break now after that whole spiel and I'm sitting near this girl who's a senior and she is not paying attention and just spills her soda all over the ground in the carpeted band room. Oh geez, what a massive tick. You're really a tick box today, aren't you? <laughs> well, guess I'll go help the tick clean up her mess. As you guys probably know, I like to joke around a lot. You know, we did that a lot even when I taught. Because in reality, I didn't care at all that she spilled a soda. Like, like, this is how much I cared about that soda being spilled. I didn't think anything of it. I just went up and went to get some paper towels from the closet to clean up this freaking soda. And I come back and this girl is like sobbing that I called her out like that. I was totally joking. I know. And the thing was, she knew I was joking, but I guess, I don't know, it was just one of those days, I suppose, so. She was crying, I was helping her clean it up, I was trying to make her feel better, it was kind of working, kind of not, it was just kind of really awkward, and that was probably just some bad timing. 
And this other story also happened while I was teaching high school band. We were in an indoor rehearsal and this show had some props on the floor. I also wrote the drill for this show and I made sure that there was at least like two to three steps between people marching and where the prop was just so no one would trip over it. So we're doing some reps and this tenor player starts marching his dots going backwards and he is so far off that he trips over the prop and flips his drums over his head and it's... I mean, anyone who plays tenors and has fallen down knows how much that sucks. It's, it's really bad and you can get really hurt. So we cut the rep off to make sure, you know, he was okay and make sure no one else tripped over him. And I just yelled down, I'm like, Hey buddy, you alright down there? Okay. Okay. He's obviously pissed off that that happened and everyone sees that he's laying on the ground and got called out. But it's okay, we regroup, we go reset, and we start the rep again. So we're doing the rep and this poor freaking dude makes the same mistake and trips over the same prop, drums flip up, cut the rep, and then I, I yell down in the exact same tone, Hey buddy, you alright down there? And I guess just the way I said that sounded like kinda douchey and he got like really, really upset and pissed off. And we, yeah, we had to like take a break after that. I feel like I could have handled that a little better, so sorry, bud. Okay, and finally, we're gonna move on to my favorite callouts as an instructor. So there was this one group I was teaching where there were two Mikes, like two guys named Mike. One was in the battery, one was in the front ensemble. And I wanted to give each of those Mikes unique names because, well, I can't just call out a mic from the box and then they won't know which one. So I got the team of Mikes together and told them, okay, we got a lot of names to choose from. You can be Mike Roch, Mike Hunt, Mike Akeslong, Mike Latorez, Mike. So yeah, there's a lot of really funny names you can make with Mike, and the one Mike decided he wanted to be called Mike Akeslong, and the other Mike wanted to be Mike Latorez. You get it? It's funny. So I would make sure to use their full nickname when calling them out from the box. Listening point. Is it Mike Akeslong? Mike Akeslong, are you the listening point? No, you're not. I knew he wasn't. I just wanted to say that name over the loudspeaker. <laughs> And a lot of times I would just say their whole nickname, even if I didn't want to call them out, just because it was really funny. Well, like Mike Latouris, excellent improvement. Mike Latouris, especially. You got that, Mike Latouris? Okay, you get it? It's funny. So I had this one student that borrowed $20 from me. I don't remember why, but... He did. He was taking forever to pay me back and it was really annoying. Like, he borrowed the 20 bucks in like January and now it was like August and he still didn't pay me back. So I did what any reasonable person would do. I publicly disgraced him by calling him out from the box about it. And we'll just call him CJ, that's not his actual name. CJ was not paying me this $20, so I would call him out even when he did nothing wrong. Drums are giving us, so make sure we listen to that. And also, CJ, you owe me 20 bucks. CJ decides to get back at me by repaying me small amounts of change right before every single rehearsal so that when I called him out from the box, it would be a really obscure and random amount of money. Very good. And CJ, you owe me $18.32. And the last and final story I have, this was when I was teaching high school band. I taught a school where I wrote this really cool snare feature where they were bouncing golf balls off of the snare drum with one hand while playing notes with the other hand, split parts. And I played that in the video I made where I performed every single solo that I played, wrote, or taught. So the thing with this is we needed a way for them to carry the ball around with them because, I mean, they didn't have pockets in the uniform pants, it was indoor band, and you can't put it in stick bags, you can't reach all the way down there to get it. So, the staff, we ended up coming up with this awesome design. We pretty much put a, a wire thing together like this and then a little sack. 
So we made them ball sacks. I mean, obviously this is a pretty tricky thing to do. Like, not only were they playing this stuff, they were also marching around the floor. When we were first learning this, we had a lot of people dropping golf balls all over. I made sure to call them out from the box by asking if their ball sack was on securely. Is it, is it the ball sacks? Are, are the ball sacks on there securely? Because if we're having trouble with ball sacks, you know, I'll, I'll come down there and fix them for you. No, ball sacks are good? You sure? All right, let's, let's reset and try that again. But let me know if the ball sacks are the problem. So that's my top 11 best and worst callouts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have some of your own callouts that you want to share, please leave them in the comments below. I do read all my comments, so you will entertain me as well as a lot of other people who go down there and read the stuff. And also make sure you click that subscribe button and ring that Liberty Bell and buy a custom t-shirt such as this one. I'll leave the link in the description. And have a good morning. You call that music? I call it trash. That sounds worse than the screaming of my enemies. You all suck so much, it makes me want to retire. I'm about to haze all of you the old-fashioned way.